Shambi alongside Chris Singleton. The first half of the All-Star break is behind us, and partner, it's go time in the second half. And if you want to be playing meaningful games at the end of September, you got to put your head down and grind for the next eight weeks. Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining us. We've got baseball on the show. It's the Houston Astros and the Boston Red Sox. All right, we'll be back to get this one started after this. About to get started here and towing the slab in this one, Cutter Crawford. Well, no doubt about it. He's going to have to put together some consistently good performances in order to bring that ERA down. Now, he's got good stuff. He's just got to be able to have confidence, trusted, and really go after hitters, not nibble. Trusted his stuff Leading can have a late life and miss barrels of bats. Ready to go? And stepping Jose, in for the Astros, oh, Jose. Jose Altuve. So ready to roll here at Fenway. And that's Whoa, in the dirt. the inside corner for a strike. Aye. Swing and a miss. And it's one and two. One ball. Two strikes. And a pitch. And that's outside. And it's two and two. Chase the fastball up the ladder for strike three. The pitchers have become so much better at commanding that high fastball. It used to be that a lot of pitchers didn't like to throw it because it threw off their release point and their mechanics, and they're aimed at keeping everything at the knees, get ground balls, but because hitters get a swing path that can lift balls at the knees up in the air and over the fence, this pitch has come back into play, and they are doing some special things with it. Alex Bregman, batting with one down, takes a strike. That one nope. is upstairs. Foul back our way, and that's out of play. One down, base is empty. Wouldn't Whoa. chase that time. Two, two, down. That one drifts ball. inside. Really good take, especially with two strikes. Two. Fights it off, you'll see another. Kicks and fires. And yeah, there's ball four. That's a great at bat. He saw a lot of pitches and earned a walk. Well, that's a nice job of grinding out that at bat. Saw a lot of pitches and ends up drawing the walk. Very gritty. One gone runner at first. Now it's Jordan Alvarez. Oh, great stop. Flips it from the ground. That's one. Double play. What a twin killing to end the inning. So they make short work of him there. And now the Red Sox get their turn. No score. Back here in Boston. Getting the nod in this one, you say Kikuchi. And Chris, pitching on the road has not been particularly kind to him. Yeah, and you don't want to be too quick to say that he can't pitch on the road. Sometimes, you know, it's just a matter of luck. It's not having a feel. Difference between the bullpen mound Leading to the mound out the there on off. the playing field. The don't know what it is, is, but I know this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got good enough stuff to overcome yeah, yeah, yeah. and get it done on the road as well as at home. So we'll see what he's able to do in this one. That one the other way, and that's just foul. Here comes the 0-1. 
and that's down it away. The only adjustment he needs to make is his target. If you aim at the outside corner, that slider's going to end up way off the plate. Perhaps look a little more down the middle, and you get it right where you want. Here's the swing and a miss. Wow, good luck catching up to that one. And that's in the dirt. Now two and two. And another ball. And a 3-2. And so the lefty allows the leadoff free pass. Leading off. And next for the Red Sox, Rob Refsnipe. Swing and a miss. And it's a one wall. for a strike at the top of the zone. Don't play situation here. He's been working up in the zone. Typically, you look for guys to get that ground ball, see if he adjusts on this next pitch. And he deals. Oh, Off the plate good. inside, and the count one and two. And a pitch. This one lifted in the air, left field. And it's That's just foul. Nobody out, runner at first. Got him swinging for the strikeout. He notches strikeout number 150 this season. Definitely made him chase a little bit out of his own right there. I don't think that's a strike if he takes it. Pretty textbook pitching. Get ahead in the count. Get the guy in the box on his heels. And then force him to chase your pitch where he doesn't have much of a chance to do any damage. And stepping in is the speedy Romy Gonzalez. Pitch out, but no action. Pitch. Run around the move. Pitch is high. And Thanks. safe. It's a stolen base. That was close, but StatCast shows us why he so often seems to be on the safe side of these steal attempts, Chris. Yeah, you see that plus speed, and he needed every last bit of it to swipe that bag. Such a threat on the bases. Fly ball down the line. And that'll fall for a base hit. Stop sign goes up at third. Runners at the corners with one out. Batting four. Third baseman. One away. Runners at first and third. And it's Rafael Devers in the box. In for a strike. Going one. The last thing he wants is to hit the ball on the ground, but I wouldn't expect many pitches up in the zone. They'll be pitching for a double play in this spot. Runners are at the corners, one away. And that's in for a strike. Big pitch right no here. He's going to try to make a pitch that's going to produce a strikeout or a ground ball double play. Step off, throw to first. No, Back in there standing. Base runner with a one-way lead right there. All he's trying to do is get a look at the pitcher's move. Had no intent of stealing on that pitch. Ball nope. one there. Duran, the runner at third. Gonzalez at first. One gone. Outside low. Two and two. <laughs> on the ground, right side. To second, there's one. On the first, and it pulls it off the bat. I promise you, there are guys that get a little bit faster when they can smell an RBI. That was a possible inning ending double play. Great hustle, and he gets rewarded with the RBI because of it. And 
stepping in for Boston Connor Wong first pitch doesn't find the zone count one and oh Red Sox already leading. Fastball for a strike. Looks like he's just sizing him up there. Really good pitch to hit, but he took it all the way. Sometimes guys just want to set their timing later on in the game. That may be a pitch that he turns on. Swings and misses. One ball. It's a ball and two strikes. And another ball. Two outs. Outside. Great RBI spot here. Just got to stay focused on the pitch. The runner will be in motion, so something in the gap should definitely score. Fouled off again, and it remains three and two. Payoff pitch. And there's a rocket into the outfield. Devers around second, headed for third. Coming home. Now a relay to the plate. Safe. Well, that worked out as good as it could have. We mentioned the RBI opportunity with the runner moving on the 3-2 pitch, and he cashed in by finding a hole in the outfield. You know, that takes a little extra concentration in the box because of the movement on the base pass. Easy to get distracted, so that was a really nice job there. Man in scoring position with two away. Danny Jansen to hit here. Oh. And there's a ball. That one misses. Two. two balls, no strikes. Two and oh. Right yeah. through there for a strike. Tough start for him so far. Already at 30 pitches here in the first. Outside. Oh, now three and one. Masataka Yoshida getting on deck circle. And on second, two down. And there's a strike. And boy, that was the pitch. 3-1, you want to be really aggressive on the fastball. Gets a piece and stays alive. Man at second. Spoils the two-strike pitch, and he'll see another. Kicks and deals. Got him swinging on the curveball, and that'll keep more runs from coming in, inning over. But two runs for him, and they jump ahead. On to the second from Fenway Park. It's the Red Sox two, and the Astros nothing. Back inside Fenway Park, and now Gainer Diaz. Well, after putting up a nice inning on offense, got some runs across, this is where you look for the starter to go out there, have a shutdown inning. Don't give that other team any hope. Uh, you just hope that he can get through this inning, get the bats back up there while they're hot. That pitch gets the inside corner. And now it's even one and one. Ed Drummond behind the plate calling balls and strikes. Maybe one of the most respected umpires around the league. He's not the kind of umpire that you're likely to notice back there. And that can be a huge compliment, really. So if you're just kind of quietly doing your job, staying consistent with your calls, hitters, pitchers, managers, even fans, they're all going to appreciate you. Ed Drummond, he's that kind of umpire. And there's one away. Singy, what kind of strike zone is most frustrating for hitters? I'd say off the plate, away, and down. And why those are the toughest locations to hit the baseball. Jeremy Pena stands in now and watches strike one. Popped up, foul territory behind the play. Jansen drifts towards it, and that's a foul ball. Looked like he got a little excited on that fastball. Got to think to yourself, I want to stay up the middle. That way, if you're a little bit early, you hit it out of the ballpark. If you're a little late, opposite field not. 
One down, base is empty. Gets a piece there, we'll do it again. Swings and misses. Couldn't catch up to the heater. Two outs, base is empty. So next up for Houston, Victor Caratini. And first offering is fouled off. The pitch. Fouled off to the right. Pitch. Got him looking. And a nice inning of work there as he sets him down. One, two, three. Nothing doing there for Houston. And they're down two nothing. And we're back here at Fenway Park. We head to the bottom of the second. Here's the left fielder, Masataka Yoshida. Yoshida. Why to kick the pitch? Clips the corner. Strike one. Good eye in that spot. Ball to strike. The pitch. That's a ball. And another ball. Two balls, one strike. strike out towards right center that's well struck high bounce takes it over the fence for an automatic double here's the shortstop at the play Oh, great stop. Gathers and throws, and they get oh. the out. Batting nine, the, the center, center fielder. fielder. Today, Rafaela. Sedane Rafaela up next for the Red Sox. in for a strike. Oh, and one. One out and a runner at second. Bottom half of inning number two. Foul ball there. Hey. Swings through it for the K. Chase the fastball up the ladder for strike three. Just no, overmatched no. on that fastball right there. there. And it wasn't like he was yeah, set yeah, up yeah. for it by something off speed oh, earlier yeah. in the at bat. Just came right after him with three straight, and he had no answer for it. And that one finds its way through. And that'll put runners at the corners with two away. Could have timed it up any better than that. Right. Pretty tough for the infielder to do anything with that one. He pulled it hard into the outfield. And even when you keep it on the ground, it feels great when you hit a missile like that. Now the number two hitter, Rob Refsnyder. First pitch, and that's in for a strike. Oh, one's the count. Lefty out of the stretch, runners at first and third. And he can't come up with it. But they get the out at first, and that'll do it for the inning. Boston strands a pair. They're up 2 nothing.
top half of the third inning. Now it's going to be Jake Meyer. Jake Meyer. Crawford back to work. And a curve drops in for a strike. 0 and 1. Yeah, and that skips in the dirt. One and one. That one misses. One and it's two and one. In the air, right side. Ref Snyder sizing this one up. Falls it in, and there's one away. Now it's a rookie first baseman, Zach DiZenzo. Oh, he doesn't get the call. One and oh. That one called just inside, I think, and on the mound, he's trying to get a little bit of an explanation. Doesn't seem to be too bothered by it, though, but he clearly thought it clipped the corner. He swings and fouls one off. Bounced out to short. Tosses to first and two away now. Batting up. The right wing, number 14, Mauricio. Two out, space is empty. Dubon. And next to hit for Houston, Mauricio Dubon. Chris, baseball today, so many strikeouts, and they are available to pitchers. But this is a guy that puts the bat on the ball yeah. and is kind of different from the players that we see day in, day out. Two down, nobody on. And that one fouled off. Yeah, his swing is so good. It's in the zone a long time. He gets the barrel to it a lot, and that produces more base hits. Right through there. Got him. And it's a three-up, three-down inning. Astros go down one, two, three. They trail things here, two-nothing. The second baseman, Romy Gonzalez. The pitch. So you, one of the things that's interesting is that guys really don't worry about swing and miss from an offensive standpoint anymore. So when you see somebody who contacts the ball like this, do you think of that as plus value? Absolutely. If he's doing damage now, if he's rolling over yeah, and, and grounding yeah. out, then it's a different story. But oh, yeah, if he could put the ball in the gaps or over Devers. the fence, 100%. Rafael Devers up to hit. 0 for 1. He hit into a fielder's choice his first time. And a strike to Devers. Yeah, and the domino effect of that is running up pitch counts on pitchers and then either getting them to a place of fatigue or getting into the bullpen perhaps before you get to those higher leverage arms at the back end. That one, one not close. And it's one and two. One of the things that Jim Leland used to say when I was broadcasting with the Marlins, the longer a plate appearance goes for a batter, the more likely it is that something good will happen for the hitter. The batter. Now a chance the for Connor Wong. He doubled home a run in his first A.B. Well, Chris, through the early stages, he hasn't been very efficient in terms of the pitch count. He's going to need to get some quick outs if he's going to get deeper into this game. Just no, missed. It is interesting, though, when you consider the way the game is run now, doesn't even matter that much if your starter doesn't go that deep because teams are really aggressively building their bullpens. And it gets down for a base hit. And that extends the inning. Up, 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 up. The catch. Danny. 
Now it's Jansen to hit. And first offering is fouled off. Jansen in his sixth season, 28 years old, and they traded for him earlier this year. Red Sox by two here in the last half of the third. Missed oh, with a changeup, and yeah, the count even one and one. And now the lefty. So a foul ball makes it one and two. A little tardy on that fastball. is going to have to get it going a little quicker. Get that front foot down. And a pitch. Fouls it off. Still one and two. Two misses to even the count. Well, I think he's trying to get a feel for where that one missed. I mean, it could have gone either way, but he looked a little shocked for a second there. Two outs. Three. He battled for a long time, but it finishes with a strikeout. You can't be mad at yourself after an at-bat like that one. And the Red Sox leave one, but they're on top 2 nothing. We go to the top of the fourth. Now it's the second baseman, Jose Altuve. You know, Singy, they talk about Red Sox nation, but there is something to that because the Boston Red Sox aren't just about Boston or Massachusetts. It's that whole New England area. So you're talking about Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, Northern Connecticut. There's a whole segment of the country that is locked in on the Boston Red Sox pitch to pitch throughout the summer. Now it's Alex Bregman. And there's a foul ball. They travel really well, and I think Red Sox fans are sprinkled all over the country. And the 0-2. That one is blasted left field towards the monster. And it's off the foul pole for a home run. So he goes yard to left. His second home run of the series, and it ties it up. It's 2-2. This thing was hooking down the line the entire way. We knew it was going to be close, and bang, right off the left field pole. That was a pretty swing, and he found a way to keep his hands inside just enough to keep it fair. Here's Jordan Alvarez. Ball just one. missed. Ball one, no strike. Two runs across in the inning. Top half of inning number four. Not even close there. And the count is 2-0. Well, these Astros just lacking discipline at the plate in this ballgame. They're chasing a lot of pitches outside the zone, and those chases that are turning into a bunch of outs. Can they turn that around and stay within the zone? We'll see, but I think they have to. The pitch. Just missed. Tough to bounce back after a big home run, but nobody on, nobody out. You just have to treat it as a fresh inning. Knocks that one away, and we'll do it again. And he walked it. I don't think he really wanted to pitch to him right there, anyhow. Now, now, now. So here's the Astros cleanup hitter, Yainer Diaz. And 
And the first pitch misses for ball one. That clips the inside corner for a strike. And the righty deals. And that is cut on and missed. And the count is one and two. Runner at first with no outs here. Next pitch is in the dirt. It's two and two. Well, with the amount of pitches that can end up in the dirt, a good second to snuck the fastball by him. The cutter right there had just enough movement on it to get the swing and miss. It wasn't a great location by any means. That's typically a spot that hitters can handle. So I'd say he fooled them with just enough of that late action. So up next, Jeremy Pena. He struck out swinging at his first at bat. Flips for one. On to first, but it pulls him off the bag. Well, he had the chance of turning two right there, but I don't think he got a good grip on the ball as he tried to transfer from glove to throwing hand. They say you can't assume a double play. I beg to differ at the big league level, but it's going to be ruled as a fielder's choice. Vic Caratini at the plate. Went down on strikes his first time through. Right through there for a strike. Check on the runner. Hey, back in standing. Two outs. That one fouled off. You two. Good job to fight that one off. Ouch. He had two strikes on him, and he hit him. Well, that one might sting for a bit, but it helps the team and it boosts the OBP move. Sometimes that trade-off is worth it, but no, sometimes it's not. Myers in the box now. Take strike one. Now one and one. one. Two on, two outs, and fouled off. Lifted in the air, right field, moving under it. Pulls it down, and he makes the catch. And that's the third out. Two run shot for the Astros this inning. And we're deadlocked now at two apiece. You're dialed into the show. Bottom of the inning, Joe stepping in for Boston, Masataka Yoshida. You know, this is kind of a tough matchup as a left-handed hitter facing a left-handed pitcher. What you tell yourself is, I want to stay square to the plate, try to hit the ball over the shortstop's head. You know, these Red Sox do a great job, Boog, of just waiting for the right pitch to come their way, and I'm seeing very patient at-bats out of them. They're doing a good job of working the pitch count, and they've been able to push a couple of runs across to score as well. Fights that one away, and the count remains 0-2. Still relatively early, but with a pair of runs already on the board, the ripple effect of that high pitch count Three. might set him up to do more damage later in this game. Swing and a miss. Got him to go up the ladder for the K. No messing around with the pitch calling in that sequence right there. Four pitches, all fastballs. Yeah, and that makes me think that was the plan before the at-bat even started. If you think you can simply just beat a guy with only your fastball, why throw him anything else until he shows you he can handle it? Number 97, the next to hit, takes ball one. All tied up. We're here at the bottom of the fourth. There's a strike. Swings and blasts one deep to left center. Back there. And it's off the green monster. And that's a double. 
He was all over that one. Double into the gap, and that was a really nice swing to beat the inside pitch. He just beat him to the spot. Kept his hands tight inside that baseball, and that just allowed him to drive it into the alley right there. And now the center fielder, Sidane Rafaela. His first at bat was a strikeout. That's a strike. Going on. As a pitcher, you know the runner on second is ready to push things with his speed. A base hit is probably going to be a big run, so you really have to execute on the mound. Pickoff throw, he's and he's back. back in safely. Next nope. pitch is downstairs. Runner at second here, one gone. And another ball. And a pitch. Fall off foul. And at second. Base hit into right, headed for the plate. Here comes the throw. It's off the mark, and he scores. It's 3-2. Well, he gets it done in a big spot to get the run across. Anytime you rip a line drive the other way, you feel really good about what you did at the plate. You trusted your hands, you let the ball travel, and you took the barrel straight to it. That's great work right there. And now they've got some speed on first, so we'll see if they try to get him into motion. So the Red Sox lineup turns over. Now batting Jaron Duran. Edge of the zone for a strike. Oh, it's 0 1. Hey. And that gets the top of the zone for a strike. Now, just a cement mixer slider right there. It's a great pitch to hit if you can recognize it early and jump on it. That's a laser base hit. They get it in quickly. So first and second now, one out. Now that's a good sound coming off the bat, man. And as he connected out front and looked into the outfield, that's one of those swings where you just don't even feel the ball hit the barrel. That's a pure stroke. Rob Refsnyder up next for the Red Sox. Swing and a miss as he was out front. Oh, one's the count. Two on, one out. Right through there for a strike. Activity in the bullpen. Hunter Brown up and throwing. At the belt and fires. Swing and a base hit. Around third. One run is in. Now two runs score. It's 5-2. Well, he wasn't afraid to hit with two strikes. I think he choked up a little bit, maybe spread out, but he got the job done right there. Runner on at first with one gone. And next for the Red Sox, Romy Gonzalez. In for a strike. Going one. And he deals. That That's misses the zone. And that is ball. One ball, one strike. And a pitch. Back to the mound. It hit him. Over to Altuve. And he'll keep it for just the one. Want to check on him. That was quite a shot he took as you see him down on the knee. Yeah, clearly in some real pain, but he will not want to come out of this game if he doesn't have to. It's looking to me like he's going to try to shake it off and continue. Man at first, now the third baseman, Rafael Devers. Devers hits that one. 
Dubon snags it, and that ends the inning. Three runs for them here, and they move ahead. We played four. It's the Red Sox five and the Astros two. Back now at Fenway, we go to the top of the fifth the at the play. Zach Desenzo. It's interesting. He plays kind of a, a power spot defensively, but runs pretty well. So when you're looking at that position, you're not expecting someone that has maybe above average speed, but he does. That one finds the zone, and that is strike one. And I think that skill set really upgrades the position because when you have that kind of speed, it makes the whole team that much better. Right-hander kicks, deals. Foul ball still 0-2. What about him playing another position on defense, one that would require a little more range? Absolutely, and I think if push came to shove where they had to make a, a move during a game, it surprised a lot of people. You might even be able to put him in center field. The punch out there, and one away. Boog, if you can set up a good two-strike splitter with a fastball on the previous the pitch, number it's going to be so tough to recognize Mauricio. it just your swing to get a piece Dubon. of it. Clearly had him reaching for it right there. Here's Mauricio Dubon. Struck out looking his first time. And a foul ball. A one down. You know, big swing and a miss. Well, you can't really adjust your game plan for that last pitch. Guy hasn't thrown it very much. You got to focus on the stuff that he's throwing up there most of the time. That's foul off to the right side. Keeps the AB going. Here's the 0-2. Up the middle. Two up, got two it. down. So the lineup flips over. Jose Altuve up next for the Astros. One for two. Foul ball there. You'll want. Foul ball. And a pitch. Nope. Just missing okay. there. Now one and two. Well, that's kind of what you expect in an 0-2 count. Excellent job of the hitter to have the plate discipline to lay off of that pitch. Way upstairs, and the count is two and two. The Astros trailing by three. And we're at the top of the fifth. On the ground, and a base hit. Takes the turn. He's digging for second. The throw to second is offline. Man at second here with two away. Here's Alex Bregman. He's already homered in this game. Ball one, no strikes. This one popped up. Foul ground, first base side. Reaches over the wall, and he's got it! For Houston, they trail at 5 2. Back now to start the bottom of the fifth and taking over on the mound, Hunter Brown. Now, now well, they didn't get much out. length out of their starter in this Number one, so they've got a lot of outs Hunter to eat up in that bullpen. Brown. I think they'll look for some length out of him right here if they can get it. Connor Wong Leading digs off. in now. For the Red Sox. 
the first base. base. Connor. As he turns on the rubber, and with that good live arm delivers. Hey! Right through there for a strike. Oh, you know, these Red Sox really impressing me with the quality of their bats in this one. It's been fun getting a chance to see them go to work. It looked to me like they really wanted to get to the starter early, get him out of the game before he settles in. So I'd Number say one, mission one. accomplished. Danny. And Danny. now it's the catcher for the Red Sox, Danny Jansen, who's 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. Nope. Just Ball missed. One. one out, base is empty. Nope. One and nope. Next hey. offering is in for a strike. The one one is fouled off. Next outside. pitch That's is cool. outside. Two and two. What do you chase that time? Right-handed reliever. Battling here as he fouls it away. at the bender for the strikeout. Third time he struck out in this one and definitely no, no, no. an individual performance no, no, no. you want to flush. He just no, no, no. hasn't looked very comfortable up there. No, no, no. Just one of those days. No, no, no. When you're still winning the ball game, at least you can focus on doing your part to maintain that lead and getting that W. Look out! And, and it hit him! him. Well, a few things can go wrong when you are no, delivering no. a pitch that grip, slip out of your hand, release point, wind up, all of those things. And I think it's safe to say at least one of those, if not more than one, got away from him. Number 97 oh, in the box for the third time today as he takes that one off the plate. And there at the knees, and the count one and one. Swing and a miss. He was late. Strike two. One ball. Yoshida off of first with two away. Swing and a miss for the strikeout. Gassed it right by him. One left for the Red Sox. They're still out in front, 5-2. All set for the start of the inning. And stepping in for the Astros, you're Don Alvarez. Crawford back to work. Alvarez, 26 years old, oh, and he was down. born in Cuba. The line of the pitch. Swing and a foul over the screen and back out of play. In one the ball. dirt, going to count one and two. Talk about the right guy at the right spot. They really need a rally, and this guy is someone you can believe in to find a way to get on base. And that one is inside. Hits and misses. It's a strikeout. Bogey just ran out of patience there. He took a couple of pitches to even that count up at two balls and two strikes, but that time chased outside the zone. Now it's the DH, Yainer Diaz. Swing and a miss, strike one. 0 oh and 1. One down, base is empty. Way 
out front for strike two. A lot of times you'll see a pitcher maybe double up on a pitch. This guy will throw it three times, four times in a row because hitters just can't lay off of it. Good solids. The throw to first. Two quick outs to open the top of the sixth. Now back. The short shot. Jeremy Pena. Two outs, bases empty. Jeremy Pena, the next to hit. Pena's dad played in the majors for seven seasons, spending time with St. Louis and Cleveland as a second baseman. Jeremy has a little more power, though. Only needed two seasons to pass his dad on the career home run list for the family. Fastball in for a strike. One one. Oh, one well, he's been incredibly efficient in this one. First pitch strike percentage over 70%. That's well above league average, and that's what's allowed Ooh, right him to down. pitch well up until this point. Two down, nobody on. In there. And so now one and two. The ball shortstop two. takes the ball. Two the ball. Red Sox leading by three. And we're the top half of the sixth. And down on strikes. And the Astros put down in order. Nothing doing for the offense that time. 9-1 and 2 scheduled to hit in the home half of the sixth. It's the Red Sox 5 and the Astros 2. Back here at Fenway Park, John Shelby with Chris Singleton in the booth and leading off the bottom of the sixth, Sidine Rafaela. The wind of the pitch. That's in for a strike. That one missed. Good spot there, but didn't get the strike at the knees and doesn't seem too convinced by the call out there on the mound as he tries to get a better sense of the umpire strike zone. Comes up empty. That's strike two. Meanwhile, activity in the bullpen. Ryan Presley getting loose out there. Blanco getting loose as well. The wind and the pitch. Three. Struck him out swinging. Had him out front for strike three. Well, that's a curveball that people like to describe now, uh, as a hammer w or Uncle Charlie, and you can see why. It's not a looping slow curve. He throws it hard, and it gets plenty of bite on the end. So now here's the D.H. Jaron Duran. And a good eye there. Left hand hitter waits. Just missed. Base is empty one away here in the bottom of the sixth. There's a swing and a drive. Myers goes back. And it bangs off the monster. Safe at second with a double. Third hit for him this afternoon. All over that one right there. When you connect and it jumps off your bat like that, you're thinking double at the very least. What a great swing on it. And, man, he wasn't fooled at all. Rob Refsnyder up next for the Red Sox. A chance for more damage right here. A couple of RBIs for him in his last A-B. Swing and a miss oh, and as he was late. And that one is inside ball one. Ripped on a line to center. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. And there's two down. Now that second baseman. And here is Romy Gonzalez. One for three. Oh. 
That ball. misses the zone. Ball one. Ball swing and a miss. And that's strike one. Ball, one strike. And it is two and one. A little out front there as he swings through it. Well, and those hitters count sometimes can be a little too aggressive, and a good pitcher will play off of that. He's got to get a better pitch to hit. Man on second, two down. Fouls that off to the left, and will do it again. Popped up first base side. Settles under this one. And the inning is over. And the Red Sox leave one. And it remains 5-2. New inning getting started. And now the switch hitting catcher, Victor Caratini. Here comes a pitch. There's a strike. Usually when a pitcher's had a dominant outing, he has filled up the strike zone, and he's gotten ahead in the count with first pitch strikes. Well, that's exactly what this guy has done in this one. Over 70% first pitch strikes. Swing and a miss. That is strike two. I think he was sitting off speed there. On the ground, right side, Gonzalez. Whips it to oh. first. And the leadoff hitter set down to open the seventh. The center fielder the six, Jake Myers. Jake Myers up next for the Astros. We talk about guys with good speed, and definitely he has it. But pushing the offense aside for just a second, Chris, it's the defensive side that I think the speed factors in the most. One down, base is empty. And that one fouled off. Well, he gets to balls that get by most people at that position. Just really impressive because there are certain times the ball comes off the bat, automatically that team that hit it thinks that they've got a base hit or they may have extra bases, and he just takes it away. Righty delivers. Misses outside, and that's ball three. Swing and a miss as he chases that one darting out of the zone. Just one pitch short of 100 now, and I'm guessing this is likely his final inning if he can get through it. Kicks and deals. Up the middle, Gonzalez whips it to first on the run. And two away to start the seven. Well, I'm impressed with this guy's internal clock. He knew he had plenty of time to take that extra step, secure his grip on the baseball, and make a strong, accurate throw. Zach DiZenzo getting ready to hit. Bottom of the zone and a called strike. All ones the count. Two outs. Hey. Swing and a miss. Gosh, a no little ball. late on that breaking ball. I don't think he recognized it out of the hand. Just a little tardy. Gonna have to regroup here. And a foul ball. He stays alive. Two down. Nobody on. Here in the top half of inning number seven. Foul ball, it stays nothing in two. Starting to go after it. 
Now a look down to first. And he won around. Not an easy call there, but that puts an end to the inning. Offense held a check there. Seventh inning stretch time. It's the Red Sox five and the Astros two. Ready to go for the last half of the inning. Here's the third baseman, Rafael Devers. The pitch. And that one clips the corner. That split is a pretty nasty pitch. Explodes out of the hand, looks like a fastball, and the bottom just falls out of it. That one at 95 missed up top, and it's one and one. Left hand batter waits. So a foul ball makes it one and two. Kicks and fires. Great. Got him swinging. And here's the first baseman, Connor Wong. Top of the zone, and it's called a strike. Not sure if he was expecting for the pitcher to come right at him, but he got a nice cookie there and just watched it the entire way. That one pushed foul. The why to kick the pitch. One ball, two strikes. In the dirt, and the count's even at two. And another ball. Payoff pitch. That one to first. Takes it himself. Two up, two down. Now out of catcher, Danny Jackson. Two outs, space is empty. And here's the catcher, Danny Jansen. Three strikeouts already. He's 0 for 3. Just missed. The pitch. Two out, space is empty. Foul ball still, a one and two count. Throwing the ball well, and they need this scoreless inning in relief right here. They're doing a good job keeping them in striking distance. Pitch misses, and it's two and two. Goes down looking. Josh Winkowski gets the call from the pen. Well, he struggled quite a bit, so this is another opportunity to get on the right track. He's given up more than one hit per inning pitch so far this season. Now it's the right fielder, Mauricio Dubon. He's kind of an outlier, especially when guys are consciously sacrificing contact to deliver power. And the pitch. That's outside, and it's one to no. And there's a strike. No need to offer that pitch until you get to two strikes. It's just a low percentage of success when you want to try to go after that down and away pitch. And the right hander deals. That Check swing, no appeal. That ball one three. misses. Ball three. Downstairs, four, and it misses down. ball four. Well, he tried to nibble right there and just missed his spot. Hitter didn't offer at it. Now he has somebody to worry about over at first. So the Houston lineup turns over. 
Jose Altuve will hit next. They hope he's the guy to spark a comeback. He tends to play better when his team is behind, so why not him? That's in there. That's strike one. Well, we call that key holding. Even though it's right there and looks pretty good, if he doesn't love it, he's not going to swing that early in the count. Swing and a miss, and he got him to chase. Two pretty nasty sliders to get this hitter in an 0-2 count. If you're up there at the plate, you got to look up in the zone and spin it with it down. Chases that one out of the zone. One gone here. We'll take a look at the three-pitch sequence here. Pretty simple in terms of putting them away at the plate. Once you're ahead 0-2 as a pitcher, you can really expand the zone and see how aggressive that hitter is going to be trying to protect and battle. And right there, clearly he was in swing mode, but all you can do is hope to foul that off. Breakman in the box now. No balls and a strike. Now, this guy's definitely looking for a big swing of the bat right here. Try to close that gap. But, you know, at the very least, if you could find a way to manufacture that run from first, it feels like it's really important to getting back into this ball. Game. Just off the outside edge. And the count is one and one. Righty to the plate. Swing and a miss, and he struck him out. Two gone now. So next up for Houston, you're Don Alvarez. A strikeout and a walk. And immediately pumps in a strike to the left-handed hitter. Headed towards the corner. Yoshida pulls it in on the run. No runs on no hits, no errors, and one left on base. Home half of inning number eight straight ahead. It's the Red Sox five and the Astros two. Ready for the bottom of the eighth. And now, Masataka Yoshida. Masataka Yoshida. The pitch. That one finds the zone. That's strike one. Good eye right there. One and one. The pitch. And a foul ball. One and two now. Swing and this one's bounced to the ground. And he grabs it in foul ground. The one two. Swing and a miss struck him out. Had him out front for strike three. Well, obviously that was nowhere near the strike zone by the time it got to the plate. And people at home watching are thinking, what's he swinging at? But I'll tell you, some of the break guys snap off these days is just devastating. It can be so tough to recognize where a pitch like that's going to end up. Number 97, batting with one down, takes a strike. Three. Swings through it, and that's a strikeout. Now oh, there's a three-pitch strikeout. He can do whatever he wants with the baseball right now. now. And yeah, stepping in for Boston, Sidane Raffaella. And the first pitch misses for ball one. Swings through that one for strike one. This guy's got a such a good strike. sinker. As a hitter, you've got to look up in the zone. If you look down, you're going to be chasing stuff in the dirt. Ripped on the ground a second. Tosses to first. Red Sox go one, two, three.
New pitcher now, Kenley Jansen. And one thing on him, he's been really good this season at keeping the ball in the corner. Not an easy guy to take deep. So here's the cleanup hitter, Yaner Diaz. 0 for 3, a fly out, a ground out, and a strikeout. And here it comes. And it's fouled away. Jansen, in his 14th season, 36 years old, and he's a native of Curacao. And now the one. The other way. He'll do it himself. It. And they get the leadoff man in the ninth. A couple of pitches and a quick out. He's two outs away. Jeremy Pena up next for the Astros. 0 for 3 with two strikeouts and a ground out. And ball one, no one. Fight. There's the strike. The Strohs trailing by three here at the top of the ninth. Bunch attempt, but that goes foul. The shortstop oh, takes the ball. That two seam fastball is usually coupled with a slider away. And when a hitter's conscious of the pitch in, it's hard for him to cover middle away. And that's where a pitcher can really finish off that batter. Right hander kicks deals. Worm burner into the outfield for a knock. So they get a man aboard with a one out single. Well, a swing like now that, that can help you come out of this struggle. Victor. We saw the numbers Victor. coming into the ball game. But all he's trying to do at this point is help his team win. Here's the catcher to hit, Victor Caratini. Hey. There's a strike. one now called strike right there well he didn't like those first two pitches now in an 0-2 hole he's gonna have to battle hope he gets a mistake Pena at first one gone that's on it and misses that's a strikeout chase the fastball up the ladder for strike three Astros down to their last out. Jake Myers now at the plate. 0 for 3 with two flyouts and a ground out. And they're at the knees. And that's strike one. The pitch. Check swing, he went too far, and it's a strike. No ball, two strike. The Astros down to their final strike. And a swing and a miss, and that is the ball game. Well, this was a tightly played game. Got a little of everything. Some timely hitting, runs on the board. Key pitching and defense in certain spots. Definitely a fun one to watch. And your final score, 5-2. Kenley Jansen picking up the save. For Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show, I'm John Shambi. We'll see you soon.